When you design a game for everybody, you design a game for no one. Welcome to MW2. There's been a lot of heat around this game, most of it as of late has been rightfully given. I mean, just look at these multiplayer maps we've gotten over the past four and a half months. None of these four maps are brand spanking new. I think Museum comes close to a new experience, but it's the same map they've held back since the beta for allegedly legal reasons. They didn't get permission to remake it the real life locations in COD, I guess. That said, if Museum had no legal issues to begin with, this two month long season two would have only had a dome remaster. That's right, only dome. And I say dome is a remaster because it appears to have the exact same aesthetic as MW3's dome. If they surprise us with a change to the layout like they did back in COD Ghosts' dome, I think that would be more acceptable. But Infinity Ward have been on a bad streak for surprises. Which brings us to our first worst take I've heard around season two, revolving around Infinity Ward themselves. Over the next week, I'll be dropping four shorter videos, one hot take per video, and then I'll be dropping these bad boys in one large long form vid for all my lovely homies to consume. But without further ado, enjoy the video, leave a like, and bon appetit. So my problem around Infinity Ward, and I hope you all see this as a big issue too, is that they promised us new multiplayer maps yet again for season two, while claiming that they had heard the community and are making changes based on players' feedback. They promised, and I quote, season two includes all new content. Ranked play is also coming to MW2, along with new multiplayer maps, new modes, weapons, and much more. Well, let me highlight this new content they promised in this full price AAA premium product MW2. I must say that they did deliver on the new weapons, and they're pretty much the only thing I'm excited for. Unfortunately, they did not show off the four camos each weapon is getting, so we'll have to hold our horses for a few more days. The only other new piece of content in this AAA premium product is the new raid episode coming in season, not at the launch of season two. If you guys remember the previous raid, it's a new linear campaign level mode with cooperative objectives, almost like a zombies easter egg, but the catch this mode has is that you have to have a party of three people to play it. No more, no less. If someone disconnects, you all disconnect. If you only have a party of two or want to play solo, you cannot play the raid. The entry barrier is quite high and is honestly discouraging. I don't know why they designed this mode like this with no single player alternatives. I don't know why they didn't design the raid levels around new multiplayer maps to save resources either, effectively doubling the content across more modes. I guess Infinity Ward thought raids could stand on the their own, without considering the fact this game already spread itself very thin. So BAM! Here's the content that's recycled from previous gods in yellow. Wow, that's a hefty portion off the roadmap already! Ranked play! Treyarch's working on that mode. All they're doing is banning weapons, attachments, and maps for a watered down, more consistent version of multiplayer. Then they're also ramping up skill based matchmaking so that it's a more sweaty experience. Hopefully that ranked play mode has some rewards, but we don't know that from this roadmap. Next is the remastered 6v6 map from MW. 3, Dome, Neato. Not even a remade map from the OG MW2. We still have no homages to the original game this new MW2 is a reboot of yet, guys. Then we got three modes coming at the launch of Season 2. All three are pretty much in every single COD. The three modes coming in Season are also not new modes. Interestingly enough, they still had the balls to market these as new modes. I mean, it's nice that we're getting some party modes finally, but these aren't new. They're all returning modes. And Shazam! Here's the content that's been in the premium game since launch in red. Looky looky, we got some overlap with Dome too. Plus we have Museum as the only other 6v6 map coming for the next two months. In fact, Museum has been complete since the beta back in mid-September, aka five months ago. Soon we're gonna be half a year into this god and they haven't introduced a single new original 6v6 map that only exists in MW2 as DLC. All the DLC for actual COD multiplayer 6v6 has been recycled content from COD's recent past, reskins of maps that are already in the game, and re-releasings of maps they've already marketed with prior to the game's launch. New multiplayer maps? My arse. You guys knew what you were doing. You even changed the new maps subtitle to just multiplayer maps. <laughs> like bravo, the bare minimum to correct yourselves with that season 2 blog post lie. What really boggles my mind around this is that they didn't put any effort into creating a single 6v6 map for season 2, especially after how laid back they were after season 1. Like, Museum was already complete and so was Dome in the old Mazra map. I mean, season 1 shipment and shootouts got a new aesthetic, sure, but these season 2 maps didn't. They shoveled us two tiny maps in season 1 and didn't do anything for season 2. If that doesn't send a message to your actual Call of Duty fans, I don't know what does. I think Exclusive Ace had a good solution and I urge you all to follow in our footsteps, as we will be boycotting the future battle passes and the future paid DLC until they clean up their act. We've been waiting way too long for a decent update 
our standards were already low for Season 2, and they couldn't even reach that bar. My bar was three original 6v6 maps, and one could be Museum. That is generous, because MW19 was giving us two original maps for its Season 2, and Season 1 had given us Crash and Vacant, two larger maps that did change up their layouts to keep things fresh and new. To top that, MW19 also remade Shipment and Rust for its first two seasons. I would disregard them to be honest, as they are 2v2 size maps, but even then, MW19 is still beating MW2 by a mile. So Infinity Ward, what a hell of a take. I recommend to you, my audience, not to purchase MW2, not buy DLC, nor the Battle Pass. At least don't get the Battle Pass until the very end of the season. I personally have enough COD points to get this pass, but I will be boycotting it as long as possible. The thing is, if you buy the Battle Pass when it comes out, you'll feel more inclined to grind it, more than you would if you didn't buy it. I wouldn't harass anyone over this like people were doing with the Harry Potter Hogwarts game, but I will make sure people are aware of COD's predicaments and the best way to encourage change. Oh, and uh, speaking of being aware, do not buy the Vault Edition of MW2. This thing is an absolute scam. Unlike the previous CODs with the Battle Passes in the past three years, MW2 does not let you carry your extra Battle Pass tier skip tokens into the next season for free. If I had an extra five tier skips back on Black Ops Cold War, I was able to bring those tier skips into the next season and get a head start. MW2 does not let you get bonus tier skips. The paid for tier skips from the Vault Edition are not additional Battle Pass tokens. You are literally forced to use them if you want to complete the current Battle Pass that, by the way, you have to buy in the first place. Originally, I planned on saving at least 35 of my 55 tier skip tokens for Season 2 back in December because I was zooming through that Battle Pass with an extra month plus an additional 15 days to spare. And then I reached this. Max Tokens. Yeah, this wasn't an issue in previous CODs because you weren't forced to spend your tier skip tokens to unlock stuff. This game changed that and sold us the Vault Edition before making us aware of these alterations. <laughs> like, sorry, do tier skips sound like Battle Pass tokens to you? Uh, these are tokens? I was promised tier skips. The only tier skips in COD were consumer friendly. This screwed me over and spat in my face. It's a lie. There's no other way to say it. What a waste of my $130 Canadian. It was an actual scam. Want more proof? I read the fine print at the bottom of this Season 1 Battle Pass bundle and the additional 50 tier skips page, it says, Battle Pass and tier skips, or equivalent versions, will be accessible in MW2 once the Season 1 Battle Pass or equivalent system is made available in-game. Now look at this. Battle Pass Redemption applies to one season of MW2's Battle Pass or equivalent system. Zero mention of the tier skips, or the equivalent of the tier skips, aka the Battle Pass tokens. No mention of them, only applying to one season. They never did this in the past, but for some reason they did this now. Want even more proof? Here's another page from the PlayStation Store that clearly tells us only the Battle Pass Unlock is exclusive to one season. This screenshot was a month or two before the game launched. Here's what it currently says in the shop. Same exact thing. So I actually checked their online blog post about the additions around MW2 and well, look there. It says MW2 additions, benefits, detailed, and in brackets, updated. Of course it's updated. Here is where they now specify players who purchase the Vault Edition after Season 1 can apply the Battle Pass and the tier skips to the current season. They expect you to find this blog post info, a blog post that updated the parameters, after we were sold this false promise. Yikes. Infinity Ward, this is an F tier take on so many levels. I'm actually pretty disappointed, and I really did express this disappointment on Twitter as well when I figured this out in December. But yeah, subscribe if you want to see part 2, 3, and 4. Make sure you ring the bell and shut the door on your way out, homies, and peace.